It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Amplified Bible says, you have a mercy seat, a mercy seat, a mercy. Now, why does it say that? Because the word propitiation, New Testament concept would be a mercy seat because that's where the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat. And that's where God said, I will meet you there. Exodus 25, 22. So he says, Exodus 25, 22, he said, if you want a meeting with God, God said, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to meet you. Amen. Somebody like that, he gets to choose. <laughs> he said, not wherever you want to meet. He said, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to meet you. He said, I'm going to meet you there, Exodus 25, 22, at the mercy seat, and I'm going to commune with you personally and intimately at the mercy seat because that's where the blood was applied. Wow. Say that backward. Wow. Wow. Say it upside down. Mom. There you go. So, so if you want to get beyond just religion and have a meeting with God, like somebody asked you, said, uh, uh, what did you do this morning? You said, well, I had to have a meeting with God this morning. Really? You say, yeah, amazing. So instead of talking about prayer, let's change prayer to I have a meeting with someone who's extremely rich, knows everything, tremendously powerful, and likes me a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to have a meeting with God. And you cannot have a meeting with God and not know it. Amen. Cannot have a meeting with God and not be changed. So what he's saying is through faith in his blood, you and I can have a meeting with God in his presence, fellowship with him, hear his voice, get his wisdom, receive his blessing. We're going to meet with God. Who would you let interrupt that? <laughs> you say, I like you a lot, but I got to meet with God. So in other words, your prayer life, and, and faith in the blood can bring any person, young or old, no matter what you look like, come on, no matter even what you feel like, can bring you into a meeting with God through faith in his blood. Praise the Lord. All right, number one, that blood has done something where? In heaven. Number two, Paul says something amazing because in the New Testament through the blood of Jesus, you're not just redeemed from sin. You're actually redeemed from sin consciousness. All right, let's try this out of it. Come on, man, that's just amazing. Come on, we're talking about in Hebrews chapter 10. God said, uh, he said, I'm going to wipe out your sin so much, he said, you won't even have any memory of it. Only the blood of Jesus has the power. Come on now. You can, you can do every drugstore drive through you want to try to get rid of some of the mess you've been dealing with. But the moment you go to the Father God by the blood of Jesus, that blood has the power not only to forgive your sin, but reach into the heart of the believer and remove sin consciousness. Sin consciousness destroys faith. And so the blood of Jesus reaches into the heart of that believer, and God said, I don't even remember you did anything wrong. Amen. All right, let's try it again. Come on now. Yeah. He said, I don't remember you did anything wrong. 
And he said, I, even I am he that blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sin. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou must be justified. In other words, God said, I don't remember he did nothing wrong. But he did that in the Old Testament. But in the New Covenant, he said, not only do I not remember it, He said, you don't have to remember it either, man. You said, what am I going to have to do? Sling a little blood everywhere. Come on, have faith in the blood. Apply the blood. Come on, lift your voice and talk about the blood. Sing about the blood. Come on, like they did in Exodus, they put the blood on the doorposts of the house. So it's not enough to believe in the blood in the house. Somebody's got to get outside, put the blood on the doorpost, and say, now, Mr. Devil, you ain't getting in here because the blood's on the doorpost. And God said, when I see the blood, I will, I got you covered. I will pass over you when I see the blood. I'm not looking for your talent. I'm not looking for how much money you got. I'm not looking for how cute you are. He said, I'm just looking for blood. When I see blood. So it's not enough to believe in the blood. There must be the application of that blood. Now listen close. In the Old Testament, the blood was applied with a branch they called hyssop. And so they dip into the blood, and then they'd put it on the doorpost. In the New Testament, the blood is applied by faith. All right, let's say it this way. In the New Testament, the blood is applied with a hyssop of your tongue. The hyssop of your voice. Ooh, I said the hyssop. <laughs> of your confession of faith. Come on, somebody said this, what Andrew Murray said. He said, uh, you honor the blood by boldly confessing that it cleanses you from all sin. In other words, you don't really honor the blood by talking about how bad you are and all, trouble, all your trouble. You honor the blood by saying, the blood has done exactly what God intended to do. The blood has done exactly what Jesus says it has done. It cleanses me from all sin, has made me the righteousness of God in Christ. Give me great boldness and confidence before the throne of God. I receive the grace and the mercy of God, and I apply that blood. And it reaches into the heart and to the deepest part of your personality and silences the voice of self-condemnation. All right, well, let's just try this out of I said, come on. I said, the blood reaches into the heart of the believer, silences the voice of self-condemnation. Even when you feel like you don't measure up, your faith is in his blood. Come on, because you can have guilt and shame and condemnation for years. Think about it. If you live in sin consciousness, it has the same effect on you if you were living in sin. All right, let's try this out. Come on, you may have quit sinning, but if you live in sin, sin consciousness has the same effect on you as if you were still living in sin. But the moment the blood of Jesus is applied, it actually reaches into the conscience of the believer and silences every voice of guilt or shame. Even if the feelings show up, you say, I live by faith. The blood of Jesus has done it all, paid for it all. No matter how I feel right now, my faith says I'm washed in the blood. I'm redeemed by the blood. My faith has to talk. That's where your application is. My faith talks. Faith comes first. Feelings will have to show up later. Go ahead and laugh about that. All right, now. So the blood... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes. So the blood has done something three places. Number one, where? In heaven. Number two, where? In the heart, in the consciousness, so that sin consciousness is removed. Every sense of rejection and failure, guilt, removed by the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So number one, in heaven. Number two, where? In the heart of the believer reaches, praise the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit working in your heart. And I like what uh, Smith Wigglesworth said. He said, the Holy Spirit never brings condemnation. He always reveals 
the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Boy, you have all kinds of voices, but the voice of Jesus, the voice of the blood, silences every other voice. Praise the Lord. So number three is the blood of Jesus overcomes Satan and every devil, every demon, everything from hell, that we overcome him. And if you don't know it and you hadn't had a personal encounter <laughs> with the devil, <laughs> you will. Because he goes about looking for somebody he can attack. Amen. And I love, I love the, the, the uh, story I heard from John Osteen years ago when he said there was a guy on a, uh, on a, a school campus and uh, he, he was, had a piece of paper out and he's writing uh, on the paper. So his friend came over there and said, what you got on that paper? He said, uh, he said that, that's a list of everybody in this school that I can whoop. <laughs> he is a bully, you know. So he said, his friend said, well, it's a list of everybody. So his friend looked at that list. He said, hey, he said, hey my name's on there. Uh -oh. He said, you can't whoop me. He goes, okay, let me take your name off. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, so when the devil got you on the list, you say, hey, you can't whoop me. You better take my name off your list. I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Come on, I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. That means I ain't going to quit talking about it. I'm not going to quit singing about it. I'm not going to stop my confession. It's my confession of faith. I'm holding fast to that confession. Praise the Lord. 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 Go ahead and laugh for a minute. Now, ha uh ha. -huh. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. The blood of Jesus, when it's applied, will actually unravel strategies of the devil. Unravel. Man, you get up in the morning, you start making a confession of faith about the blood. And I got some from this lady named Ruth, R-O-O-S, and she had a little book on the blood years ago, and she would say, make this confession. One of the great things she said is when the, you feel like the devil's attacking your mind, attacking your life, she said, you chastise him with the blood. All right, let's just try this out of it. Come on, don't lay down, let him run over you. You resist him. He's the one that's going to run from you in fear. Sometimes the Lord even show you him, the devil running right out the house. Go down, down the street. <laughs> so when the devil attacks you, you ought to say, devil, you've got a lot of nerve to attack me like that. I'm fixing to chastise you with the blood of Jesus. Come on, and you whoop him this way and whoop him that way and whoop him that way. Come on, and run him out of the house. Say, so you say to my Praise the Lord. That the blood of Jesus is liquid love flowing from the heart of the Father God, reaching into the heart of the believer and lets you know somebody loves you unconditionally, no matter where you come from. Come on, that love makes us more than conquerors through him. The blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The blood of Jesus, so your confession and you can actually make that confession uh, in a song, right? The songs they were singing. We used to sing a lot of those songs. Uh, and are you washed in the blood? So sometimes the Holy Spirit will bring a song up out of your spirit. You know, you may be at the house and going through a struggle, and, and, you, and the song come up, and you go, ah, oh, that came from the Holy Spirit. I, I guess I'm supposed to sing that. Now, I know y'all can't sing as good as I can, but you know you can try. So I'll go ahead, and Trinity laughs at me. She says, he walks through the house singing all the time. A lot of times I'm singing an old song from a hymn book, sometimes a new song. Amen. And I'll start singing about the blood. That's one way you can make that confession. Y'all still with me? So, confession, Ruth said, the blood of Jesus purges me from every defilement of the enemy. That's a good confession, isn't it? 
Come on, the blood of Jesus purges me from every defilement of the enemy. Now, I always throw Wigglesworth's confession in there, Smith Wigglesworth. He said, there is not one thing in me the blood does not cleanse. All right, let's try this one. In other words, the devil can't hit you with something and say, you're never going to get over that. All right, let's try this one more time. Come on. I said, the devil can't put nothing on you and say, that's never going to come out. That stain will be in you for the rest of your life. You say, hold it just a second. I'd like to get my attorney on this one right here because my advocate, the Holy Ghost, said, if I would plead the blood through faith in the blood, there'll be no evidence that ever happened in my life because of the grace of God. Woo, washed in the blood, cleansed by the blood. There's not one thing in you the blood does not cleanse. All right, again, here's another one from Ruth. The blood of Jesus prevents deception and aborts every attempt of the enemy to deceive me. Well, the devil's a liar. He's a deceiver. The blood of Jesus prevents deception. So when you're applying the blood, come on, you're pleading the blood or slinging blood everywhere. You say, that stops every strategy of the devil to deceive me. Then she said, the blood of Jesus is my divine covering and protection against every attack of the enemy. Or you could say the blood of Jesus becomes your shield of faith or iron dome. Come on, when a missile's coming in from the enemy, you go, oh, man, I got some other missiles intercepted way out there. So the shield of faith, boy, I'm telling you, it said he'll stop every attack of the enemy. I plead the blood. The blood of Jesus is my divine covering of the day. Now, my mother did that, kept me alive. But there comes a day in your life when you're going to have to do it for yourself. Come on, you have what you believe, what you say. Come on, your faith, through faith in his blood. So my mama would, I, I'd hear her do it all the time. She'd say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Many applications. Because I kind of laughed because when I was in high school, I had a girlfriend, and she had the miniskirt days, you know, 1970. So I brought her over to the house. That miniskirt, boy, she was something, man. I brought her in the house. And I said, Mama, it's my girlfriend. My mama said, I plead the blood of Jesus. <laughs> my, my, my girlfriend said, well, what did your mama say? I said, nothing, it's nothing. <laughs> well, you know, that girl didn't have a chance. Because <laughs> when you start putting blood on the subject there, man, it wasn't long. She was gone. And I, I brought Trina home from Bible college. My mama said, thank God for the blood of Jesus. I thank God for the blood. Look what he brought in this house here. <laughs> thank God for the blood. Come on, got me a woman, got me a wife that loves Jesus, loves the Bible, loves the praise. Come on, loves to pray. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> So when I trip my mom, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Apply the blood. Faith in the blood. Amen. And the two ingredients of faith is, number one, accurate knowledge. Faith requires accurate knowledge. In other words, it's not enough just to look at something. Here's, here's something Dad Hagen said, and I, I think you can, this will really help, because uh, you already have information and knowledge on the blood. But to have accurate knowledge of that and bring that into application. So faith requires revelation and application. Faith always requires a voice. You're going to have to say something about it. Your confession of faith. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my mama would plead the blood, but here's something Dad Hagen said. He said, he asked the Lord one time why some people don't get increase 
in church, church people. In other words, they're not getting results. Why aren't they getting increase? Why aren't they receiving from God? He said the Lord gave him 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 says this. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. All right, let's go over it one more time. Come on, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. Y'all still with me here? In other words, Paul preached the word of faith, uh, uh, the gospel. Apollos was trained by Paul, so they preached the same gospel, same word of faith. So Paul says, here's where the increase came from. He said, the first time you heard that revelation, that's the planting. But you can't get increase no matter how good the seed is and no matter how good the ground is unless it's watered. So he said, I planted. He said, Paulus came along, taught the same thing. That's the watering process. So he said, why don't some people get increased? He said, most Christians reject the watering process because they've already heard that message, so they think they already know it, so they just kind of turn you off. So they have what's called mental ascent. They don't have revelation knowledge. They don't have faith, so they don't get any increase. He said the key to increase is the repetition of revelation. Come on, the watering of that seed until it gets saturated day after day after day. And then God says, I'm giving you some increase, which means you're going to get some results that you cannot get from just the planting on Sunday. We want to know what the watering is on Monday and the watering is on Tuesday and the watering is on Wednesday and the watering is on Thursday because if you're watering, come on, that thing's going to spring up and change your life. That includes almost any part of Revelation. Revelation about redemption, revelation about health and healing, repetition, watering until it saturate you. What's happening? Then God says, now you're going to see the change increase. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. There's no doubt we're living in uncertain times. People are struggling with anxiety and have a lot of questions about what's going on in the world and how that will impact their future. Do you want to live an overcoming, victorious, and faith-filled life? In this new two-CD set, How to Have a Meeting with God, in this set, you'll understand how as believers, we have boldness and confidence to draw near to God. In His presence, we get answers, direction, help, strength. In fact, everything we need is in the presence of God. Along with this new CD set, you'll get the book, The Bloodline of a Champion. Mark Hankins explains the power of the blood of Jesus. This book has a brand new chapter about his grandson Dylan and how he overcame leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. Faith in the blood of Jesus can help us live in the reality of our redemption, which gives real solutions to real people for real problems. By faith, we are part of a new bloodline, the bloodline of a champion. Your gift of any amount will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today while my parents have been talking about the bloodline of a champion. And we will send you the bloodline of a champion book for your gift of any amount. This book, if you've never read this book, this book is amazing and it's easy to read. It's a power, powerful, powerful message, but it's also very easy to read. And it's exciting because you're finding out everything that you have because of the blood of Jesus. We wanna make sure this book gets to you. So for your gift of any amount, we will send you this book. Because of your partnership with Mark Hankins Ministries, my parents are able to continue going and preaching and teaching all over the world. It is their honor, it is their dream, it is their, their life's goal to continue to preach and teach all over the world. So because of your partnership, you help to send them 
from place to place to place. And it is such a blessing to them and to this ministry. Also, because of your generous, generous donations, my parents have been able to translate the books into many, many languages. It's actually their vision and their heart to translate the books into 100 translations, 100 languages. So that will make a huge impact all over the world. And because of you, we are able to do that a little bit at a time. And we're so thankful to you. Thank you so much for believing and partnering with this ministry and with this vision and with this goal. We're so very thankful. Thank you so much. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional, and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.